to the naked eye, this is just a BMW X5, but this is a pretty special car because it's the first one that's powered by hydrogen. Now, some of you may know that hydrogen is great for a few things and primarily it's commercial vehicles. So why now, why an X5 and what does BMW have to gain from investing in this technology? Well, let's find out. For those of you a little out of the loop on the significance of hydrogen fuel cell technology, it's best to think of it as a replacement for diesel, where battery electric vehicles serve as a replacement for petrol power. This is because a hydrogen fuel cell electric system is much lighter than an equivalent battery electric system, and therefore it won't eat into the payload of a truck while still allowing for a comparatively long driving range and rapid refueling times. Before you get too excited though, it's worth remembering the biggest downsides of the technology, and that's the upfront cost of the infrastructure. Unlike petrol or diesel, for hydrogen to be used as a fuel in a truck or a car, it needs to be compressed and refrigerated at the refueling site, which means major investment. This is primarily why brands like Toyota and Hyundai are ahead with their hydrogen fuel cell technology. Both brands have large commercial divisions where there are bigger advantages to be had. But BMW doesn't have a commercial vehicle division, so why is it interested at all? Well, according to the brand's head of hydrogen tech, BMW sees fuel cell technology as being not just convenient, but a necessary part of the passenger car mix if it wants to achieve its climate neutrality goals. In fact, data the brand showed us indicates that the overall cost of hydrogen infrastructure actually decreases over time, while for battery electrics, it increases forever as the network spreads. BMW also showed us data which predicted a mix of hydrogen fuel cell and electric vehicles would be as much as 34% more economical than battery electric alone when it comes to decarbonizing its fleet. So why specifically an X5? Well, BMW's picked this body shape intentionally. Firstly, the hydrogen system fits nice and easily inside an existing car. They don't have to make a special car around it like some other brands have done. And secondly, the use case for a vehicle like this is very specific to how hydrogen might be used in the real world when something like this comes to market because it's bigger, it's less energy efficient, it has to push more wind out of the way. And also a vehicle like this is really frequently used for towing. And you might know that that's a big hobby of Australians who buy cars like this. And this is why BMW is such an advocate for the technology. It says offering its customers the right zero emissions powertrain and being technology agnostic is more important than committing entirely to one tech or the other. And no, you can't buy an iX5 hydrogen, at least not yet. Only a few hand-built examples exist and BMW is touring them around the world as a tech demo for what it sees as a significant part of its future model mix. Another advantage of hydrogen cars is because they aren't as range limited as their battery electric counterparts, they can take on much more traditional vehicle body styles. They don't have to transform into super aerodynamic shapes like many EV models have to, to chase small range gains. Thanks to the shape and size of hydrogen stacks and their cylindrical fuel containers, they can also be placed neatly into existing combustion car platforms. From the outside, this results in a very familiar SUV formula, but it also extends to the inside, where the iX5 hydrogen is virtually unchanged from its combustion companion, aside from adding some software tweaks in a very similar fashion to other BMW models, which are available as both combustion and electric cars. The hydrogen tanks work their way down through here where you might normally have a transmission and a drive shaft heading to the rear, but otherwise the interior is pretty much the same. And when it comes to operating it, well, it's pretty much like an electric car. Let's go check it out. So what's a hydrogen car like to drive? Well, I've driven the Nexo, I've driven the Mirai, and now I'm here in the iX5 hydrogen. And the thing is, there's nothing unusual about the way a hydrogen car drives because essentially it's just an electric car. It's got a big electric motor at the rear in this case for this car. It is rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive like other X series vehicles. Uh, but it feels like the iX to drive. It's just purely electric drive, uh, nothing particularly unusual uh, about it. There's no power delay that you get from the hydrogen fuel cell um, trying to generate that power and transmit it to the rear motor. So nothing odd like that. It is really just an electric car to drive. And that goes for the things like regen braking as well. It's got three levels of regen braking. It's got a single pedal mode if you put it into B mode too. So 
yeah, it's basically just an electric car. This one, of course, has several drive modes. It's got that Hans Zimmer electric soundtrack, which you would have heard if you've driven any other BMW electric car before. And of course, this one has air suspension as well. It is a little bit heavy and you can kind of feel that built in here, um, but nothing super unusual. So yeah, if you've driven an electric car before, well, it's just like one. Now, there are a lot of things that we don't know yet, things like ownership, uh, things like how much it will cost or particularly how efficient it will be, but it is showing, it looks like about 65% uh, H2 left in the tank here, and we've got 229K, so that speaks well to the amount of range that should be available in this car. We have only driven it a short distance today, so I can't really tell you what it'll be like over a longer distance, but again, I don't expect there to be anything particularly unusual about it. If you do want to see more on the refueling, make sure to check out our Nexo versus Mirai test that we did several years ago, and that will show you a few things about why uh, the network and the current state of the refuelers are a little bit immature and might need some time to develop into that market, but we've seen that for EVs as well. Now, under this bonnet here, there's not a lot to see, but there is a hydrogen fuel cell hidden under all of this that's actually developed by a Toyota, but BMW put all their own touches on it to make it more powerful. There's also a higher power battery system to go with this fuel cell too, to power the same motor as the BMW iX at the rear. Now, see the combined outputs for all those things on your screen now. Just 6 kilograms of hydrogen fuel is enough to grant the iX5 over 500 kilometers of WLTP certified driving range. So where does this hydrogen fuel come from in the first place? The reality right now is much of it is produced as a byproduct of the natural gas industry. This type of hydrogen is not actually emissions free and is often referred to as grey hydrogen. Green hydrogen, which is emissions free, is instead generated through an energy intensive electrolysis process. This is why hydrogen Hydrogen is often seen as not very energy efficient because it needs a lot of energy to be generated, transported, compressed and refrigerated and then converted into a form in the fuel stack where the car can actually use it. Instead, hydrogen provides a solution to an awkward issue in our energy grid where much of the power generated ends up being wasted no matter whether it comes from fossil fuels or renewables because it can't be stored cost effectively. So while generating hydrogen isn't an energy efficient process, it does allow us a way to store a significant fraction of power which we otherwise wouldn't be using. Unlike battery storage, stored hydrogen fuel can be shipped long distance, it can also be used to power factories and industrial equipment, it can be used in aviation, rail and maritime, and it can even be used in usually polluting high heat applications like the smelting of steel. It's particularly relevant to Australia, as our potential for generating solar and wind energy is amongst the highest in the world, theoretically bringing the cost down for generating green hydrogen and giving our country both a way to store that power and a new resource to export. And this is all on top of being a power source for vehicles which can theoretically drive very long distances, refuel quickly and tow like diesels. So there you have it, BMW's iX5 Hydrogen. I think one of the most interesting things about this technology is you could hop out of a combustion X5 or even an iX and into one of these and there's nothing weird or unusual about it. It is so familiar, it's so easy to drive. It's basically just an EV with air suspension in this format. I also think that this technology has a lot to offer for Australia, both in terms of our energy grid and being able to scale long distances with just six kilos of this fuel. It's pretty impressive stuff, but how far it is away from a real application, well, that's yet to be seen. Now, if you want to read more, make sure to check out all of our stories around BMW's hydrogen, Toyota's hydrogen, Hyundai's hydrogen over at carsguide.com.au.